today is the first Sunday of Advent this year. And during Advent, as during Great Lent, you see that we wear purple vestments, which is a sign of penance, sacrifice, and preparation, preparation for something that's coming. Great Lent is the preparation for Easter, the resurrection of Christ. And Advent is the preparation to worthily celebrate the incarnation, the birth of Christ. And you will notice that in one of the re readings we're told by the apostle to wake up from our slumbers. This is the time. The day is at hand. We must be awake and not asleep. It is crucial. So this Sunday, we're told to arise from your laziness and sleep. And I would suggest that we all need to do that because of the days in which we find ourselves. I believe we are in the last days. I believe that the true church, which is the Catholic faith of all the ages, of all the councils and all the popes, the Catholic church, the faith, which is contrary to Vatican II, the council from hell. That was the preparation for the coming of the Antichrist. In scripture it says, it talks about, until he who restraineth be taken out of the way. The synagogue of Satan knows that in order for them to advance their Messiah, their King, who we know will be the Antichrist, they had to remove the Catholic monarchs from Europe. And the last removal that would oppose their Freemasonic, Judeo-Masonic, synagogue of Satan, evil, rule in the world is they must remove the highest power, spiritual and temporal, which is the Pope of Rome. The church is infiltrated from top to bottom by Freemasons, atheists, phonies, who withhold proper intention at ordinations, even the form of the sacraments in the Latin Rite has been changed, highly questionable. Two weeks ago, I explained to you that by taking the doctrine of the Catholic Church of transubstantiation, which means that the body and blood of Christ on the altar after the consecration, the bread and wine are no longer bread and wine. They have the outward accidents of bread and wine, but the substance has become body and blood of Christ. And Satan has taken our doctrine and twisted it and used it in such a way that now in the church, the outward sign is kind of churchy. Protestant, but kind of churchy. There are buildings, there are clergy, there are services. But as we have been told in prophecy, it's not the Catholic faith, not the Catholic Church. Last Sunday, I suggested to you that if we take the heretical doctrine of consubstantiation, which came from Martin Luther, condemned at the Council of Trent, that the bread and wine remain bread and wine, but added to them is body and blood of Christ. The church rejects that, 
And I tried to show you the false teaching where there are those who will tell you that the same man can be the head of a false church and of the true church at the same time. But the Catholic doctrine, my friends, is as soon as any person, whomsoever, on any level from layman up to the top, fail to believe in one doctrine, they are no longer Catholic, they are outside the Catholic Church, and if they are shepherds, they're false shepherds. I mean, for example, if a bishop or priest doesn't believe that Christ is truly present in the Blessed Sacrament, he needs to resign and go get lost someplace and pray and do repentance. But that man is not a Catholic. If he had been validly ordained, the sacraments would be valid, but he would be outside the church and committing sacrilege. I believe, this is not dogma, when scripture talks about he who restraineth until he be taken out of the way, I believe that is the authority of Christ <coughs> through the Roman pontiff. And I believe he who restraineth has been taken out of the way at the death of Pius XII and the infiltrators who simulated the pontificate and pretended to assume the throne of Peter. I don't know that the throne of Peter is vacant. I don't promote Sede Vacantism, but I do say the throne of Peter may be vacant. It's <coughs> impeded. The throne is impeded, probably vacant, although Cardinal Siri may have had a successor. We'll find out when Christ comes. I think we're very close to the end. My words to you is, be faithful, maintain the faith unto death, don't give in, stand for Christ who is the way, the truth, and the life, maintain the faith and thus you are in the Catholic Church, you are in the body of Christ. The heretics have cut themselves off from the body of Christ. Now. There's a movement to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. All the various prophecies are now coming into place simultaneously for the coming of the Antichrist and the glorious return of Jesus Christ to establish his eternal kingdom. He is prophet, king, and priest. As his bishop, for some reason, from all eternity, before I was conceived in my mother's womb, I was called by God to be a prophet, king, and priest. And I'm sure, <laughs> as scripture says, God uses the weak to confound the proud. I am thanks be to God, a least likely candidate to accomplish anything, because I will accomplish nothing. Christ will accomplish whatever he wishes through me. I believe the Antichrist is very close. Christians are persecuted and martyred all around the world, and I believe it's coming to this country. I think we're very close to the Great Tribulation. But the good news is this, Jesus said, through many tribulations we enter into the kingdom of God. He who perseveres to the end, he will be saved. God is love, and love casts out. 
Jesus said. In this world you will have many tribulations, but fear not, I have overcome the world. And he overcame by his humility and obedience, his death on the cross, the shedding of his infinitely precious blood. And may we be worthy to eat his body and drink his blood so that we have his life in us. In dealing with the evil in this world and with demonic possession and witch covens and all this other nonsense that I have to deal with from day to day, that is the power. Jesus said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me and I give it to you. And so when we are attacked, I accomplish nothing. But I command in Jesus' name, by the power of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, may you have a disdain for worldliness and remember as often as possible 24-7 that the risen Christ is dwelling in you. And there is no, they could kill the body, but they cannot kill your soul. If you are in the state of grace. Cling to the teachings of Holy Mother Church. It's all true. And when I come before the judgment, weak as I am, imperfect as I am, again I will accomplish nothing. Because I will not give answer for my sins. I shall know that I am washed in the blood of Christ. And I will appear white. No, may you also remember that at the judgment, Christ has saved you. And may Almighty God bless you in the Mini Patri, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen.